So my name is Caitlin and I enlisted in the National Guard, Texas Army National Guard um, on September 1st, 2017 um, at the Dallas MIP. So that's where I have dealt with everything. I'm in Texas. Um, so I've never made a video before. So if I like don't look at the camera or you catch me look at myself or like I don't know what to do with my hands, um, just bear with me. I. I honestly kind of debated on whether or not I should make a video just because there are so many videos out there, but I've watched all of them because none of them continue, like they still don't answer all of my questions and I have a million. I'm one of those people who needs to know everything about everything and it's not that I'm, I'm not a control freak, but I'm going into the army, like I'm leaving for boot camp. I want to be as prepared as I possibly can. So all these little minor things I've like questioned, I'm telling you, I've looked up everything. So um, here's just like a little bit about me. I'm, I'm 22, I'll be 23 next month in November. So it's the end of October. So all of this is pretty fresh on my mind. I went to MEPS the 1st of September. So it's only like two months out. I haven't been through all of like basic and everything. So. I think what I'm going to do is maybe like make videos as I do things, that way um, I can let y'all know what's going on as it's happening. Um, so anyway, I, I'm 22, I wish, I really wish that I had realized that this is what I needed to do like when I was in high school or like pretty fresh out of high school because I'm older. And I feel like I've wasted like five years of my life, and which isn't true. I mean, I got promoted because of all the college classes that I've been taking. So if you're older and you've been to school and you've got a ton of college hours, that's actually okay. Like even if they have nothing to do with the military or nothing to do with what your military, your MOS, what your military job will be, um, that's fine because like you get promoted for it. So instead of starting at the bottom of the bottom, fresh out of high school, you're actually like getting a little bit of a pay raise because you've got some intelligence on you. So that's good. Um, I've got, I've got some notes here, so that's why I keep kind of looking down. Um, so anyway, I, I have a boyfriend and we like talked about getting married and settling down and like buying a house and then it was all like great. Like that's what I wanted in life. And then um, I started losing all this weight. I've lost 40 pounds since February. And in June, I was like, I can do something with my life. Because I'm from a small town. And I want to do and be a part of something bigger than what Marshall will ever be. And I just told y'all where I live, so don't be creepy. Um, <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. I want to be a part of something bigger than myself. I want to do for others. And that's kind of why I joined the Guard. Because instead of just active, where it's pretty much offshore, overseas, um, if there's a natural disaster, the National Guard steps in. So I can help my community, not just my country. And I think that's really important, that you're serving your country and the people of the United States, but also your community, not just the nation as a whole, but your community. And so that's why I, I join the Guard because I can help my community. I can help everyone around me, but I also get to live at home. And that's pretty important to me. And not even just like living here, but also if I wanted to move, I can. And I get to come home once a month for drill because actually my unit, my base will be in my hometown. So like that just add to the cake. Like I can come home once a month if I decided to move away. So anyway, um, National Guard, it took me like two months to go to MEPS. And MEPS is the Military Entrance Processing, I don't remember what the S stands for, but it's basically when you, before, like when you go to sign, um, when you're dealing with your recruiter, you're not, you're not really signing anything. Like y'all are starting your paperwork, your paperwork. And you're starting your paperwork packet, but, like, anything you sign doesn't really mean anything until you go to MEPS and you swear in. So, like, don't worry when you go to your recruiter. They're not, like, tricking you into signing, and then you're going to ship out next week. Like, that's not how it works. So, I was dealing with my recruiter for two months. And, hey, I love my recruiter. My recruiter was awesome. I know that they tell you to, like, don't trust your recruiter. Like, he's just trying to get a signature. And that might be. But, like, mine has genuinely taken care of me 
Mine, mine's been awesome. So definitely keep your eye out, watch your back, but they're not, they're not horrible people. They're people. They're doing their job, yes, but they're still people, and they are nice to you. Um, so anyway, um, I've been dealing with my recruiter for like two months at this point, and we started my packet. Well, I'm a paper case, and a paper case is someone who has had surgery or has some kind of issue, and a doctor has to look at you like specifically. Like you're not just a perfect bill of health. You can just slide right on through. No, I had surgery on my foot, so a doctor had to like look at my paperwork. Like I had to go back to my surgeon. My surgeon had to write a letter saying that my foot was going to be fine at basic and anything else that I'll be like dealing with. So it was, it was definitely a process. And then I spur of the moment got to go to MEPS. Like my recruiter called me on Wednesday and was like, Hey, I need you in Dallas tomorrow. So you can um, sign in. So you can swear in. Sorry. Which Normally, that would have been fine, but this was the same week that Hurricane Harvey hit, and being the good civilian I am, I was trying, and I did, I actually did this, I made a group to go down to the Beaumont area to, like, help out, so, like, I had been so stressed. I didn't get to eat, I, I mean, I did, but, like, very little, so I lost, like, six pounds this week just from not eating, like, I was so stressed, and he called to tell me that. And my stomach just dropped. Like, I was not, I was not prepared to go to MEPS at all. So, um, yeah, I went on Wednesday, or I got called on Wednesday and went on Thursday. Um, so I'm going to backtrack a little bit, and I'm really sorry. Like I said, I've never made a video before, so I'm kind of, like, everywhere. But part of, like, the paperwork that you're going to do is your recruiter is going to check your ASVAB score. And I don't remember what ASVAB stands for, but I mean, it's an ASVAB test. Like, you took it in high school, and if you're a few years out of high school, then you're going to have to retake it. Like, I think you can, like, wait up to, like, three years post-graduation until your score just gets, um, it, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but um, your score, like, goes away. So I've been out for five and I had to retake this test. And let me tell y'all, when I had to retake this test, I had to relearn math. When I was in high school, I was in like smart math my junior and senior year. So I'm talking about like calculus, algebra, like the whole nine yards where you need a calculator so you can graph things. So like basic math you get to do on your calculator. No one's judging you like no one cares, but like you do four divided by two is two on your calculator just so you can double check yourself. I haven't done long division in probably 10 years. Like, honestly. No, that's kind of overstepping. That put me at 12. But, like, seriously, since, like, my freshman year of high school, which was, like, eight years ago. So, um, anyway, relearning long division, um, how to do, like, this basic algebra. The test itself isn't hard. Just out of sight, out of mind, you forget how to do things. So, I had to relearn this test. And so, if you're studying for your ASVAB or you're thinking that something that you're interested in, you can download apps. Um, there are apps that are basically questions from the ASVAB. So you can learn how to answer these questions. And some of them have like tutor parts in them so I can actually tell you how to do it. What I did was I was like Googling how to do these things. And so like I learned myself. So anyway, I take it, it's called the PiCat, this like pre-ASVAB test, it's called the PiCat. And I made a 78 on it, which is really good. It's a pretty good score. Um, obviously, you can, I think the like high score is like a 99. So 78 is not bad. And I know in the Army you have to have like a 31 to um, be smart enough to go. So 78, 78 is pretty good. Um, and then with your PiCat, you have 30 days to go to MEPS and like retake the test. And by retake, you only take like a 20 minute, like a 20 question test just to say, yep, that was me. Those were my scores. I didn't cheat. Blah blah blah. We well, have 30 days to do that. And so I learned all this stuff. It was kind of stressful. So anyway, fast forward back to like when I go to MEPS. Um, I had not like looked at my study stuff in a month because I was under the impression that I would get to like a week's, at least a week's notice on whether or not I was going to go. So then I could like look at it, blah, blah, blah. Well, my recruiter called me on Wednesday. And guess who has not looked at her ASVAB since she took it weeks ago? This girl. I'm completely stressed. I'm completely exhausted. Like, mentally, physically, just drained. I was like, can 
we can I please like do this next week? Like there's no way I'm like mentally prepared for MEPS because I'm sure this isn't your first video and if it is, that's cool. But people like freak out at MEPS. Like they say the people there are the scariest and they're intimidating and like MEPS just really blows. So I'm freaking out. <laughs> Didn't have, I had like a little brain fart, but anyway, I'm like freaking out because I'm just not prepared for what I'm fixing to go into. Oh, my battery's done. Hang on. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so anyway, MEPS is like scary and all this other stuff. So I'm like freaking out about the fact that I'm going to MEPS tomorrow and I'm not in any way, shape or form prepared. And I have to retake this ASVAB test. Like even though it's like the 20 questions, like I still haven't looked at this stuff. So like, what if I forgot how to do long division? So freaking out, I have no idea like what to pack. And like I said, I've lost 40 pounds. None of my clothes fit me. I have one pair of jeans that are like decent. So if you don't know what to wear to MEPS, like you're on your way and no one's really telling you. So if you go on Thursday or not necessarily even Thursday, you're going, you go for two days most of the time. So the first day you go and you take your ASVAB test. And then the second day you actually do your physical and swear in. So first day is not like super big deal. Um, I wore a t-shirt and my nice pair of jeans and shoes and that's it and you go you're in the federal building you're going in a federal building so like no weapons no guns obviously nothing you have to go through a metal detector like I mean you're in the federal building so people are gonna like make sure that you're not trying to blow anything up um so yeah I go in and I I don't know what to do like I don't know if I'm not even blaming on my recruiter. I don't know if people, like, do more digging than I do or what. But, like, I literally don't know anything ever about what I'm getting into. So, I go and I sit down and my recruiter was like, okay, they're going to come get you and you tell them that you're taking a test and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, so they're going to come find me sitting down over here in this lobby and they're going to know what I need to do. And they do. I don't know how, but they do. So, I go take this test and... um this liaison is, and your liaison is like your branch head. So there's this guy in this computer room and there's like a whole bunch of people taking tests. And he like is signing me in and I'm like, hey, like I'm fixing to take this test. I'm exhausted. Let's do this. And he's like, oh, ma'am, it's been a more than 30 days. So you have to take the whole test. And I just dropped. I was like, okay. Let's do this. Because neither me nor my recruiter took into consideration that it took me forever to get to MEPS. So I take this ridiculously long test. And I mean, when I say ridiculously long, I mean like three hour test. And I finally, I finally got through with it. And then you go into this it's called a TAPAS, T-A-P-A-S. And it is like the psychology portion of this whole MEPS, this whole process. When I did research, somewhere I read that you like get drilled by a psychologist. Like they're going to drill you and see if you're mentally fit. So like that kind of concerned me. And then I find out that the psychology portion is this TAPAS test. And no matter what, you're going to look like an, a uh, an asshole. I was going to say idiot, and it turned out weird. So I'm, I'm an asshole. Um, and, like, the questions are, or would, you weather, would you rather, I'm sorry, I forgot how to talk after I ate lunch. Um, what, would you rather? So you've got two answer choices, and you pick which one you relate to most. So, okay, I get, like, do you like cats more, more or do you like dogs more? And that decides if you're crazy or not. And then I, I'm totally being hypothetical just so you can see what I, what was going through my head. No. The answer choices are, um, quote, sometimes I don't work out as much as I should or sometimes I let my anger out at inappropriate times. What? Like, I'm not lazy. I'm not going to tell them that I'm lazy because I don't work out as much as I should. Like, I work out all the time, y'all. I lost 40 pounds. I'm not lazy. Um, but I also am not going to tell them that I have anger issues. Like, how do you win at this? So this, in this entire quiz, questionnaire, whatever, is like 120 questions long of bull crap questions. Like, they all, they were all horrible like that. 
So, like I said, I sat here for like three hours taking this test, and I get out. I couldn't even tell you, like, I feel like my eyes were just looking in different directions. I was so tired. So, like, I meet up with my recruiter. I called him, and I met up with him, and he's like, well, what'd you make? And I was like, I don't even know. Like, I don't. I don't care. I feel like I've flunked this thing. They probably think I'm, like, crazy. He pulled it out. I made an 81 on my ASVAB, which is three points higher than I made when I actually studied for this test, which means I perform well under pressure. So, hey. But, yeah, so that was it. Um, I got to go home. Like, that's literally it. You, oh, you have to sign out. And I'm like, oh my god, like I don't, I don't know what to do. No, signing out, you take off your sticky name badge and you walk to them, and then you leave. Like you don't have to do anything, and I just, they know everything, but you don't. I don't know. So we leave, and he takes me to the hotel, and I don't remember the name of the hotel, but I will tell you this: um, Meps Hotels. Or the one I went to, so I would assume most of them have it. They have a Freedoms Lounge. And that is where the people who are going through MEPS... Like, that's where you get to hang out. That's where you sign in. That's how your room is, like, taken care of. Like, you don't check in through the hotel. You check in through the Freedoms Lounge MEPS thing. So, I happened to walk in with another girl and her recruiter and that's how I knew what I was supposed to do because my recruiter dropped me off at the door so didn't know what I was doing like I said I don't know what I'm doing ever in this entire process so she walked in with her recruiter and I just kind of followed them and we were signing in and um the guys behind the counter were kind of rude to her um, it took me longer to fill out my paperwork because I didn't know something. Like I said, my recruiter wasn't there to help me fill out this paperwork. So, like, I didn't know one of the things I was supposed to fill out. And the guy behind the counter was, like, drilling her. Like, he explained to her how the rooms were. Like, the guys' rooms were, like, these floors and, like, the women's, ladies, whatever. They were on, like, the second and third floor, I think. Um... Our curfew, curfew was at 10 p.m., so it was like lights out. You had to be at least in your hotel room at 10. Um, we had some kind of orientation meeting at 8. So I got there at like 4. So from 4 to 8, like you got to eat in the hotel. They gave you like a little ticket thing for you to eat with so you didn't have to pay. Um, and then you just like hung out in your hotel room or the Freedom's Lounge. And like the Freedom's Lounge had TVs everywhere, and you could play like – PlayStation, Xbox, watch TV. It's basically so you can get to know the people who are in the military with you. Like, you're all signing up together. And, um, so, I mean, it, it was really cool. It was a nice experience. It was, it was nice that it was kind of, like, laid back. Um, but no one was hanging out in the Freedom Lounge except, like, and I, I say goobers and I mean loosely, like, but they were some weird people and they were super clicked up. So, like, me and my roommate couldn't, um, couldn't really hang out with them. Like, they were playing apples to apples here and, like, some kind of poker here. Like, you can't just join that. Or these people over here were playing the Xbox. Like, nobody was just, like, hanging out. And so, me and my roommate, we were just kind of, we just went back to our room and hung out and we ate dinner and... Went to orientation. Well, at orientation, I found out that of, like, the 50 people who were staying in the hotel for MIPS with me were all shipping out that Tuesday. Except me. I was the only person who was there for my physical. So, that concerned me because when I got to the hotel, no one had any record of me. Because, you know, spur of the moment, I got to go to MEPS. So, like, my papers hadn't made it to the hotel yet. So, I mean, honestly, I was like, I'm going to get to MEPS at 6 o'clock in the morning. And no one is going to know why I'm there. Like, that concerned me. Because, you know, I need to know everything and be in control of everything. But, no, it was it was taken care of. No problems. They, they knew what to do with me. Blah, blah, blah. So, we did this orientation. And we had like an hour and a half left we could go to the gym or whatever well I didn't know so if if you want to you can take more than one pair of clothes I just took what I needed for Thursday and Friday but if you want to work out the night before like you can go run so just bring clothes to work out in um 
in your spare time and you have your personal time before you can go to bed. Um, so I got up, God, I swear I got up at like 3.30 that morning. Like I've got nasty hair. I've got to wash it every morning. And, um, I think they gave us like a wake up call at like 4.30 so you could get dressed, pack your bag and be downstairs at 4.45 in the morning. So I got up at 3.30 so I could like do my hair and like just a little bit of makeup. And when I say makeup, this, like I have no foundation on. It's just like eye makeup. Uh, um, my roommate, she got up, like, <laughs> at 4.40, like, right before the, like, right before we had to go down there, which, I mean, that's fine for her. Um, also, so when you're actually doing your physical, I like to think of it as, like, almost a business meeting, like, not really, definitely not church clothes, but I wouldn't go in a t-shirt. Um, I know a lot of people do enlist in t-shirts. Jeans without holes, for sure, and, like, closed-toed closed shoes. I wore just, like, a decent shirt. I wouldn't do, like, a v-neck. Um, this is inappropriate, but just a just a decent, decent shirt. You want to look nice. I mean, you're swearing in today, so what pictures do you want to, mem like, have for memories that, oh, you look like a hobo? Sorry, I pressed the record button. Do you want to look like a hobo or do you want to look nice? So we had to be downstairs with our bags and everything packed at 4.45. We started eating breakfast at 5. And the breakfast was okay. Like it wasn't bad. It was hotel breakfast, but it was free. And then we loaded on this gigantic charter bus and we went to the federal building at 5.20 Friday morning. And we're standing outside of the federal building at 5.30. So, what you can't take into the federal building, and I kind of mentioned it earlier, was like nothing, no bombs, no obviously, no guns, uh, pocket knives, anything that could, you know, be hazardous. Um, like, so while I was there, this guy had a bottle of cologne that was shaped like a um, grenade, and he actually had to, like, leave it on the steps outside the federal building because it looked like a grenade. Because you have to walk through with your, well, your bags, you have to push through the metal detector x-ray machine and you have to walk to the metal detector well I had two straighteners because I've got little hair so I have like this little baby, baby straightener and like a normal straightener two phone chargers um, my keys because they're like electronic um, you have to take your belt off so what I'm saying is if you don't need it don't take it because if it's electronic you have to carry it in your hands and so I had my bag which was like half full loaded down with electronics that you have to put in a basket and then push everything through. So, I mean, it was just a real inconvenience, especially when you're standing outside, <clears throat> sorry, the federal building for several, several minutes. Um, so I went in and I had, oops, sorry, I had, um, I had this folder that like no one else had. And so that's the only reason that this liaison knew that I was not shipping out that day like because everybody there was for their like last weigh-ins before they were leaving except me and I, my folder was different from everybody else's and so that's why he was like oh hey do you need to do your physical today and I was like yeah because I don't know what else I'm supposed to be doing so he sent me to my liaison which was the guard liaison versus the army marines navy whatever and we swapped folders so now I had the same folders everybody else did and he sent me to my physical and this is like I don't know, are we 20 minutes in? Like, this is the part that you're actually looking for, so listen. <laughs> that was really dumb. I'm sorry. But, um, so, my version of my physical is going to be a hundred times different than yours ever will be, and I promise you that, because at Dallas Meps, I was the only female to go through my physical. And, um, any other given day, there's 60 plus people trying to get their physical done. And on this day, I was the only female. So I walked down this hallway to do my physical and it's six o'clock in the morning. So everybody there is grumpy as hell. And when I say everybody, I'm talking about like the people who work there, um, because I'm the only one. And I sat there for about 15 minutes and then like six other people trickled in 
and like were sitting next to me because they needed to get their physical done. So there were seven of us, me and six others. And the six others were men, boys, guys, whatever. So I am absolutely nervous as balls because everything that I've read was this is the scariest part. Like they're going to be rude and intimidating and it just really sucks. So I, I mean, I'm nervous. And they, they called me forward and he checked my blood pressure and it was just like a basic doctor's checkup. Like that's, that's all it is. Like they're, they're doing a basic physical to see if you're basically physically healthy enough to enter into the military. Like down here, they don't even care what branch you're going in. Like just to see if you are physically capable to do the bare minimum. So I, they check my blood pressure and then I go in and I do this eye test. Um... And I was wearing my glasses. I am blind as an absolute bat, you guys. So I'm wearing my glasses because that's what they told me to take. They didn't. They told me not to wear my contacts, that I should wear my glasses to MEPS. So I get to swear in in my goofy glasses. But anyway, so I take my glasses off and I have to like look through the thing. And this is where you do the, like the letter test where they're like read line number nine. And so you have to like read it left to right. And... I don't really know what it does because if you're uh, whatever but you do that thing the thing where it's like it's in this little thing very vague I say the word thing a lot sorry so and then you have to look at this book and it's colored um and it's for your colorblindness test and so you're looking at these like circles are like this big and they're like got little dots in them and they've got a number so like the heart it, it was kind of difficult honestly and I'm like I'm not colorblind at all but you had like brown dots with a red number in the middle. And the dots were all different shades of browns and reds. So it was it was honestly kind of difficult just because, I mean, red and brown is really similar. So, um, <clears throat> sorry, when I talk a lot, I lose my voice. But, so anyway, and then I went over and I stuck my face in another machine. And I feel like this is pretty universal. Like, you're going to know what I'm talking about because... I'm not from Dallas and I have to look in this same exact thing, but the end of the tunnel has this little red farmhouse and it like focuses in on it. And that was it. That was the seeing test. Like that was the eye test. So if you've ever been to an eye doctor and you've checked out fine, that's your eye test. It's super simple. So then I, I left that room and went into this hearing room and like they were, everything's like there's curtains. It's this whole wall of just like curtains and like really old looking like 80s equipment. And 80s is a weird term, but when you see it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So you sit down and you've got these earmuffs and you do one ear at a time. And they just like have all these different all these different pitches and when you can hear it, you press a button. When you hear it, you press a button. When you hear it, you press a button. And then it switches to the other ear and you press a button. Super simple. So if you can hear okay, the test is like super duper simple. The only thing that really kind of sucks about it is the people next to you. If they're moving, you can hear like noises. Cause when like your earmuffs are in, like it makes things echo. Oh, I forgot to mention. Um, you can't have sex before MEPS. So like one, don't get hanky panky at the hotel. But two, just so you know, and I don't really know how it affects girls. I do know that it affects guys because it puts protein in your pee. And so if you've got excess protein in your pee, that could indicate steroids or you could have an internal issue. So like I said, I'm not sure how it affects females, but I do know males, um, you get protein in your pee. So anyway, back to the hearing test. Um, that was it. It was over. It was just like a few minute long test. Um, we were full with the seven of us. And then we had to go out and we had to sit in this room. And this is like the scary room where they're going to intimidate you. And no, there was a Navy liaison and he came in and he taught us how to fill out a scantron. Because in that folder I told you that I got, um, they you have a scantron. And you just bubble in the question, like the answers to the questions that you already answered with your recruiter. Like you just basically refill this packet like three times throughout this entire ordeal. And so if you haven't, if you haven't done um, the liaison or not liaison, if you haven't done the paperwork with your recruiter, um, you're going to have basic questions like, have you ever abused prescription drugs? Have you ever had a surgery? Do you have any heart condition? I mean, it's, 
it's basically like when you go to a doctor's office and you're like giving them your medical history. Like it's it's those kind of questions. So this Navy guy, he taught us how to fill out a Scantron and then we had to watch a PowerPoint. And at this point, you guys, I have to pee. Like about to explode, I have to pee. Because I peed when I first got up, I have to pee when I wake up. Like I just do. But you have to hold your pee, like, they tell you this, so you can pee in this cup so they can test for, you know, pregnancies and drugs and all kinds of other pee test things. So I have to pee really bad, and so does everybody, the other six people in this room. We all have to pee really bad, but you can't. Like, you have to wait in this order. So, like, thank God there were seven of us. So, anyway, he we're watching this PowerPoint, and... This is the part where they're like, don't you lie. Don't you? And I'm not telling you people to lie. Like, you should be honest. Be honest with your recruiter. Be honest there. But, and they might hound you. Like, they really might hound you. Personally, I didn't get hounded. Like, and that's why I'm making this video because MEPS was not scary for me at all. Um, he, I mean, he told us, he's like, you could get fined the 10000 and you could go to jail but those are like under extreme cases. Like it's not just because you told a little fib. Not saying you should lie. Like I, I'm not. But I, I wasn't scared. Like he was a nice man to me, and he was. I mean, they picked on the guys because the guys were honestly stupid. He literally taught us how to fill out the scantron, and like the kids were not getting it. So yeah, they got picked on. I did not because you know I listened to what he told me to do. So. That was over with. We finally got to go outside and we did the breathalyzer to, you know, make sure that we weren't, like, drunk the night before or even there. Um, I've heard. No one told me this, I mean, other than to not go out drinking the night before. I'm over 21, so even, like, if my mouthwash had alcohol in it, I think I would have been fine. But I've heard that if you're a minor, not to use mouthwash just in case it's got alcohol in it so you don't blow a percentage of alcohol. I didn't have any problems. I blew. No one told me anything other than not to go out the night before. So it was whatever. And then I got to pee. Like, I finally, I made it. I got to go pee. And I thought it was going to be great. And it was not. Um, ladies, you know how hard it is to pee in a cup. Well, you don't have the luxury of doing the best you can. At MEPS, you have to pee with the stall door open. And the stall door doesn't just stay open. Um, you have to, like, hold it open. Well, the problem is, I have short legs. So, I had to, like, prop my knee up to, like, hold the door open, balance on my left leg, and pee in the cup. And let me tell you guys, that wasn't graceful. Pee went everywhere. I peed everywhere. And I know this is a little too much information, but I'm trying to give y'all like the facts of what I went through at MEPS. So pee everywhere. Um, you can't, you have to put the cup down on the floor. So the lady, the nurse in there watching you pee can see this cup at all times. So as soon as the cup hits the ground, you can actually shut the door so you can like finish peeing and wiping and whatever. So like, I mean, I took care of business and I was pulling my pants up, but this cup is covered in pee. And so like I took toilet paper and I was just like gonna like clean the edges of it. Well, she's gonna like reach down for it and she's like, you can't pick the cup up without the door open. And I was like, I'm just trying to clean off this cup. I peed everywhere. So, like, I guess she realized what I did, and I opened the door at the same time. So, I handed her this cup covered, or this pea covered cup, and I walked to this window where there's a man standing. Like, it's off to the side, so there's, like, not a direct shot, but, like, there's a man basically standing in the women's bathroom. And I hand him this pea cup, which he put gloves on, so, I mean, like, it's sanitary on his end, except for the fact I had to sign a piece of paper that said, this is me, this is my pee. I hadn't washed my hands yet, guys. It was pretty gross. Like, I'm not going to lie. So, like, as soon as I, um, signed, sorry, I, I got to wash my hands and got sanitary again and, and cleaned. Um, and then I got to go give blood, and 
if you've never had your blood taken, sorry, I've got duck feathers. Um, if you've never had your blood taken, that was a real redneck comment, I'm sorry. If you never had your blood taken, they take like just a couple of vials of your blood. So if you've got a problem with it, you're gonna have to get over it because when you go away too basic, like they prick you and poke you for like hours. So get used to it. Um, took my blood, sent me on. Okay, so then I go to um, the doctor. And this is the guy who like reviews everybody's paperwork. Um, and he's gonna ask you to go over these questions again. And he's going to read over all of your yes or no questions, but he's also got your folder. So like my paper case folder, all my papers, he's got, he's got them documented. Um, and then I handed him my folder that had all my yes or no questions. The Scantron that I filled out earlier, he's looking over that and he asked me. And if you're like me, you've like looked to see people's experiences at MEPS. And this is what I got from the person who's going to hound you all the time. Apparently, he's going to ask you 47 different ways if you've ever smoked weed. And you're just going to be like, no, sir, I've never done it, blah, blah, blah. When he asked me if I'd ever smoked weed, I said, no, sir. And then he asked me if I've ever used or if I've ever, uh, if I've ever abused prescription drugs. And I said, no, sir. And then we moved on. Like, he did not hound me at all. Like, I had no problems. We just, like, went through my yes or no questions. I said, yes, this is when this was. No, this is when, like, this wasn't a thing. No, I've never done this. No, I've never done that. Like, he just asked me the questions because he's a doctor. Like, no intimidation, no hounding. We just rolled with it. We were both just trying to get out of there. So then he sends me to where I'm going to do my naked physical. And you're not fully naked. You should wear a decent bra, um, probably like the nude black or white, just like a decent bra, no, no lingerie. Nothing that's going to make anyone in this room uncomfortable. So, like, no lacy thongs. I mean, guys, wear boxers. Like, I don't... Guys, y'all just, like, walk through, turn your head cough, like, simple stuff. Girls, don't wear lacy stuff. Um, wear your granny panties, not your granny's panties. But your, your granny panties. Um, full butt, full crotch, covers everything. Um, and usually, apparently, you're going to go in this room and you're going to be full of girls and you're all going to be doing this stuff at the same time. But it was just me. So it was me and the nurse lady. And she made me um, strip down. And I don't even know why, but I went to, like, a dressing room to, like, change. And then I put on one of, the, like, the gynecologist's... Um, cheap jacket things. I don't know why. They all had to see me naked anyway, but you did. I had to cover up. And I, t I talked to her for a few minutes. Like, we had a question. And by this point, like I said, they were kind of grumpy. But like I said, it was 6 o'clock in the morning. So, this was 9, 30, 10 o'clock at this point. Everybody's awoken. Had their coffee. Um... So she was nice. It was just me and her, and we got to chatting, and she was real nice. And um, then this this another male doctor came in, and it wasn't the doctor who I'd originally talked to. It was an, it was another doctor, and he actually had to like watch me do motions. And if you haven't heard of the duck walk, you should really. And I can make a video if you want me to. Um, I guess comment, and I'll do to the best of my ability the motions that we did but um basically you're gonna take your little sheet thing off and you're standing in your bra and underwear and you have to like walk across the floor different ways just so they can see that all of your joints are moving right so like you put your wrist out and you like roll your wrist and like they just like make sure that you can like fulfill your motions correctly it's kind of awkward but it's not at the same time. What sucked for me, and like you're watching a video like the whole time. So there's this video with someone showing you exactly what you're supposed to be doing. And the nurse lady, she was she was showing me what to do too. So the only reason it kind of sucked on my part is they I had their full undivided attention. So instead of them being able to focus on everybody doing it, it was all on me. I messed up. It really kind of sucked. And I had surgery on my foot, so I was really concerned about the duck walk. The duck walk wasn't hard. My issue... They make you curl your toes. 
Um, and I kind of have a problem with that. Like, the way my foot is, I mean, I can do it. It's just not as curly. Like, my, my left foot can curl pretty well. This other one's kind of like, meh. So, that was the only issue I had, period. Um, I would look up the motions that you need to know, and I would practice them. I practice the duck walk. You really don't want the first time you're doing a duck walk to be in there because it's it's hard. It And it's not really hard. It's just really awkward. So, like, your body's not like, this isn't how you walk. Stop doing it. Like, that's how your body's reacting to it. So, and this, this is one reason also that I made this video. I didn't know about this, and so, like, I had to go, and you go in and you do, like, a basic pap smear. Um... And it's, it's fine. It's just, it was unexpected. I didn't, I didn't expect it. So this is for you guys to like, hey, you're going to get a pap smear pretty much. Um, he's going to sit you in, you're going to get your sheet back. Even though you've been walking around naked in front of him this entire time, you get your sheet back. And he's going to do like your lungs and your heart. And he's going to like listen and check your ear holes and basic physical stuff. And they made me lay on the gyno bed, you know, with the foot stirrups, um, he, like, massaged me, that sounded weird, but he checked for breast cancer, he checked for lumps, um, oh, you're no longer wearing clothes, I forgot to mention that, like, because it's pap smear, so you're, you're all naked, that's why they gave you your sheet back, um, so yeah, he, like, massages, that's a weird word, I keep using it, but you know what I'm saying, he, like, checks for mumps, bumps, mumps, <laughs> um, and then he goes, he goes down and does like a basic pap smear. And instead of like the Q-tip portion and they like swab, he doesn't do that. He just does like a basic one. Make sure, make sure that your vag is actually your vag and it's not man-made. That's what he's doing. And that's it. That is the physical. Um, you get dressed and they just kind of check over your paperwork, make sure you've been everywhere, make sure that you've done all the different test physical portions and you get to leave. Well, not leave, but you get to leave the physical area and you get to go back out into the real world of the federal building. Um, I was through at 10.30 a.m., which is awesome because usually when people go, like I'm telling you, there's 60 plus people there any given time People aren't even, like, getting through their physicals till 4 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I was done at 10.30 a.m. So I um, went out and went back to my liaison, and he gave me, like, a little survey to do. And I got to hang out in the cafeteria for, like, two hours, and I met I met a cool guy. He was in the Marines. Um, we just, like, hung out while he was eating lunch, and I was doing my survey. Um... They called me in and I started my like paperwork because my physical is done. Like I passed. I'm ready to go. I'm literally just waiting to swear in at this point. So we started my paperwork. I got my contract written up, like how long I was serving. And I'm doing a six and two. So it's like six years active guard. So instead of being active army, active guard. So it's still my once a month thing. But then you do two years of inactive. And basically you just show up and say, hey, not dead. I'm here if you need me. Um, this is also where you pick your job. And in the Army, National Guard in the Army, you get to reserve your job. Like, you get to pick what your Army job will be. So, I am a 25 okay. Bravo. <laughs> I am an information technology specialist. So, I work on computers. And I'm sorry, I completely forgot what the hell I was doing. Um, so, yeah, I signed my contract, figured everything out. Um went into another, went down another hall, went to another room, did some more fingerprints. Um, that was it, 1.30. I went into the swear-in room. There were four other guys. These, one of them, I think, went with me through physical, um, and we all swore in. We swore in. I swore in separately because I am in the guard. So instead of just swearing in to the president and country, I swore in to the state of Texas. So my swear in was a little bit different. So I got to say mine first, and then um, they said theirs. We all stood together, and you can have your family there. Um, I didn't have mine. 
It was fine. My recruiter took pictures. It was it was fine. Um, but you, yeah, you can have your family there. I don't really know how that works. Sorry, I'm at work. You so. can have your family. You can have your family there. I'm not sure how that works. Um, like, what if you don't make it through your physical? Or I guess you can maybe, like, decide when you swear in. I just went ahead and did it while I was there. But it was a pretty exciting day. Like, I, I'm enlisted in the Army, and that's pretty cool. So, that's that's really it. Um, you can comment on my video. I'm leaving in January, so if, like, five of you watch it and have any questions, you can definitely comment, um, and I'll get back to you. If you've got something that you want to see or hear about, I can make more videos until then. Um, in the National Guard, we have drills. So, before I even leave, I go to what's called RSP, and that's once a month, just like normal drill, and I actually learn, like, ranks and how to salute, how to respect different um, cadence call or yells, whatever. So, I'm also learning that stuff. Like, I have to do my OPAT test, and I can explain an OPAT test. So, um, I will make another video pretty soon and hopefully get it posted. But, yeah, I'm leaving in January. So, if you have anything that you want to know... By all means, ask away. I wish I had someone who was going through it real recent that I could ask. So, see you later.